Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I got a request to do a video explaining residency to non-physicians. And obviously my experience is in urology residency, so that's the way this video is going to lean. But I also wanted to include some general urology, or sorry, general residency knowledge in here. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe. If you're in medicine, send this to your non-medicine friends. It will answer potentially some of their questions. Let's jump in. So residency in general is continuing training after you graduate medical school. So in order to become a board certified whatever specialty you're in, you have to complete residency in that specialty. You have graduated medical school, so you are a doctor. You have a medical degree and you are a doctor, even though you're still in training. I think that confuses people sometimes. There is a process to match into residency. You may, have, if you have friends or if, if you are familiar with the process, you may have heard of match. Basically, I think of it like sorority rush, where you apply to programs, you get interviews at programs, you interview at certain programs, you rank those programs, they rank the applicants, and then you're matched. And that match is a binding contract, meaning that you can't be like, yeah, you know what, never mind, I don't wanna do that. You, once you sign up for the match and every place you rank, like if you match at one of those places, it is a binding contract and you have to go there. Um, obviously like, I'm not gonna get into extenuating circumstances or anything like that, but that's the idea. So that all of these spots are filled and all of these places have the physicians they need to staff their hospitals. Residency can vary in length. Um, I think the shortest one is three years and then it goes up to seven years, not including like research years. My residency is five years. Urology is usually five or six. And that extra year, if there's a six year program is typically a research year. The first year of residency is called your intern year. And this, you are a PGY1 or post-grad year one or an intern. And I don't know why there's this like varying specification. The only thing I can think of is some people like will do intern years in a different specialty. So I had a friend who did ophthalmology and her intern year was in internal medicine. And then she started her ophthalmology residency the year after that. Um, and that's just how the program worked. Like some were integrated and some were not. I know dermatology sometimes does that, PM and R. And then there's some programs that are integrated where everything is all together. Urology is most commonly like this. That being said, during our intern year, we do six months of general surgery. The AC, ACGME requirement is I think like three months of general surgery and three months of some other non-urologic surgery. So we just lump it all into general surgery. And so you have to do at least six months of some non-urologic general surgery. And then the rest for us is urology. I think this still varies in programs. Some do like more than six months, but the minimum is six months. As an intern, your responsibility, and again, I'm speaking to my experience in my urology residency program and kind of like what I've learned from some of my urology colleagues at other programs, but this is obviously not a blanket statement, so this may differ, but in my experience, intern responsibilities are a lot of floor responsibilities. You manage the floor patients, you do the discharges, um, you, you know, if there's anything that arises on the floor during the day, you're kind of the first line in handling that. And then, you know, you're also involved in some of the more minor cases. So cysto cases or like small open cases. Obviously, you know, if you are not doing anything, you're welcome to come to the robotic cases, come bedside, come to all these other cases. But kind of your main responsibility is the cysto, the smaller open cases and the floor work. For us, for urology intern, when you're on urology, you don't take any call. So that means that you're not on call overnight or um, you don't like primarily hold the pager when no one else is in the hospital. We do have you kind of join the threes on call during the weekends. And so you do, you are responsible for some care in the weekends, but you always have someone else who is your kind of backup. You're never like the only person there. Moving on to second year. Second year, kind of as you go through residency, the 
responsibility increases that means the cases you could do increase in complexity you go from more minor cases to more major cases and you are kind of more responsible for leading the team so we try to lump a lot of our call more towards the junior years and then during your senior years you are like managing the team or your burden of call is less second year historically in my program and across i think many programs is kind of the hardest year second year you are responsible for the consult pager which is the pager that you get all the consults to in the hospital and this is traumas emergencies like other teams calling you about consults you're also responsible for your own caseload um, almost every day you're responsible for your own cases these for us are usually cysto cases these are like the more complex cysto cases compared to intern year or again like small open cases sometimes you are double scrubbed with a chief doing robotic cases, you're helping to bedside, um, you're helping to get access to the abdomen, or you're doing some more complex open cases with the chief, which is really nice. Second year, you are on call a lot more often. Um, it's your first year of taking call, and my program does home call, which I think a lot of urology programs do home call. Some will do a night float system, I think, but a lot do do home call, which is where you are taking call from your house. So you go home, you take the pager home, and your night can be terrible and you'll have to go to the uh, back to the hospital a lot or it can be less terrible and you're just managing stuff from home. Um, and this means you don't have a post call day unless you have a really terrible night. Your second year outside of residency, I think this is the hardest time to find work-life balance. You are either usually either on call or post call. Um, and so you're just trying to catch up on sleep, study what you can, prepare for cases what you can, and like just generally eat and exercise maybe a little bit. Um, obviously it depends on how busy the service is, but this is, you know, definitely our busiest, most stressful year. For us, we split the call between our second and third year mainly. So as a third year, you're taking a similar amount of call as second year just because it's split. But third year is when we do start to do some off-site rotations. So, you know, for the remainder of our program, we have a couple rotations that we rotate through more commonly that we are the main residents at, only our program covers. And then third year, you start to do some offsite rotations. For us, PEDS is an offsite rotation, so we share PEDS with some of the other residencies in the area, residency programs in the area, and so it's your chance to get to work with those programs. Um, and it's not you know, a place where we spend a majority of our time. It's kind of an extra place where we get to go rotate because we want pediatric experience and we get to have pediatric experience, which is great. So third year, you're sharing the call, but you're not holding the consult pager. So in general, the responsibility in terms of crazy floor work is a little less third year, um, but you are taking the same amount of call and you're starting to increase the complexity of your cases. So just the way my residency is laid out, third year you do a lot more kind of open cases, more complex open cases. You know, the twos and the ones do most of the cysto, the fours and the fives do most of the robotic, and you're doing a lot of the reconstructive cases and peds, which again is, you know, a lot more open cases, which is great. You really get to cement your open experience during that time. Life outside of residency is a little better because I find you are less exhausted not holding the consult pager all day. I think one of the hardest things about second year is juggling consults and like crazy stuff going on and your cases. You know, you're doing a case, you're getting paged all throughout the case, you know, the nurses are trying to call them back, med students are trying to call them back, but you know, it's just hard if you're not being able to get on the phone and manage things immediately. You have to like keep a really, really good list. And, and if you're a medical student, this is a time where you can really shine to help out. Um, if you're like an AI, just helping out managing the pager while, while a two is scrubbed. But it's really hard to manage all of those things. You're running between cases to go manage consults, see consults, staff consults, you know, potentially someone needs to go to the OR, you're rearranging things. It's, it's a lot of stress. And so when you come home at the day, at the end of the day, not only are you kind of physically tired but also mentally tired just from juggling that and as a three i found the biggest revelation was not holding the pager during the day in the or it was so great to just be able to 
focus on operating and it actually made me enjoy operating more which was kind of a, a really good revelation for me um, so I found that was the biggest difference like I said you do take a similar amount of call but then you kind of hand the pager over when you get to the hospital the next day so it's instead of you know carrying it overnight and the next day it's more relaxing to just hand it over during the day then you move on to fourth year for us. Fourth year in my program is our most relaxed year. We have a couple months of research, which is great. We have one rotation at one of our main sites and then we continue peds this year. And we have another offsite rotation this year. You are on call way less often. Um, at our main site, you take call one night a week. Uh, no call on research unless you're covering. And then our offsite rotations is like one in four and one rotation is busier than the other. So this is our historically the time where you kind of get to feel like yourself again. Um, I have found I definitely got into a better workout routine this year. I'm a four this year. So you get into a better workout routine. You know, you have more time to kind of pursue outside interests. I've definitely done a lot more videos this year, a lot more media this year, just because I've had the time, which is really great. The thing you have to start thinking about fourth year, and you know, you're thinking about this throughout, but really kind of cementing it fourth year is, do you want to do a fellowship or what's your job situation? If you want to do a fellowship, this is the year where you start to apply to fellowships. Hopefully, you know, you've been networking and people have been mentoring you before this, but you're actually applying to fellowships and doing your interviews. I am not doing a fellowship and therefore I am applying to jobs. And so I'm doing job interviews, I'm doing job site visits, I'm trying to figure out what, what I wanna do, where I wanna be, what practice I wanna be at. So it adds a different complexity to this year, um, but it, it makes you, at least for me, kind of realize, oh yeah, this is coming to an end. Residency is, I'm over halfway through, I'm closer to being done than when I started, which is, you're in residency for such a long time that I think that really creeps up on you pretty fast and it's definitely something to think about. And then fifth year is known as chief year. This is also an ACGME requirement where you have to be a chief for 12 months and this means kind of you, you're responsible for the whole team at the hospital you're at. So we don't do any outside rotations our fifth year. We do all of our main core site rotations and you are leading the team. You're responsible for the management of every patient. Obviously you still have attendings, but you this is your chance to prepare to be an attending yourself, to really step up, take responsibility. You want, you're starting to get a lot more autonomy in the OR. Um, you know, you, you have to think like you're gonna be doing this on your own. So it's a big step up in responsibility for us you are taking chief call, so meaning you are not on the primary pager. You are taking backup call, so if any of the juniors who are on call need advice or are going to the operating room, you are there to support them. You come in, you operate with them, you give them advice over the phone. If they need help with a patient or something's going wrong, you come in and help them, but you're not being the one primarily page being like, hey, can you put this catheter in? Hey, can you put this order in? So I think that is a little bit of a nice break in terms of holding the primary pager, but you are on call more often. So for us, because there's a different chief at each of our main hospital sites, you're on call every weeknight, backup call, and then you split the weekends with your other chiefs. Like I kind of mentioned before, fourth year and chief year is kind of where you start to do more of the major cases, more of the robotics or big open cases and you are really taking control of those cases, managing of those patients post-operatively, and being like the, the team leader, uh, which is a whole different set of skills that you need to kind of cultivate. I can't really speak to life outside of the hospital chief year, because um, I haven't done it yet. I think it is a relief, like I mentioned, to not hold the primary pager, but I also think it depends on the time of year and the level of comfort with your juniors. You know, at the beginning of the year, you definitely, I think, need to be more hands-on because everyone's stepping up a new year and getting used to their new roles. And then kind of by the end of the year, I think people are way more comfortable in their roles. I think it also depends on the personality of the person who's the chief. I definitely consider myself, and I think all of my co-residents are this way, like very type A kind of like, we kind of are perfectionists, which I would imagine most people who are in neurology think of themselves that way but I imagine we're all gonna be pretty hands-on and want to be very involved in all of the patient care that is going on. 
So that's kind of the layout of urology residency. You know, I would say residency in general is a huge